Okay, welcome everyone. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, welcome to uh, the Facebook group, the International Brotherhood of Polybonds, and progressive discussion viewers. Uh, I am your host and the founder of the group and progressive discussions way back when, 1995, and the group was founded in 2012. Welcome everyone. Another week has rapidly uh, zipped by. Uh, time and tide uh, waits for no man. That's uh, what Ed Norton said on the honeymooners. And um, I am with the one and only best co-host I could ever have, Mr. Jeff Zambello, uh, originally from Boston, Mass., now residing in the maritime provinces of uh, Canada. Jeff, how are you doing this week? Very good. I'm a little sick today. I got a bit cold, but I still train. I never miss a workout. Uh, everybody's going to laugh at what I say this, but the only thing that stops me from working out at the gym is if I have diarrhea. But if I have a flu, if I have a cold, I still work out. And because here's my way of thinking people all over the world, whether you're in Siberia, Russia, or whether you're in um, the jungles of South America, you know, i.e. Chris Balcone, or you're in um, a, a harsh place in Africa, people still have to work uh, to get food, um, go hunting for food, whatever. So the least I can do is go to a nice air-conditioned uh, gym. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, the great workout. I worked out twice today. Um, and James and I, we had a nice pre-show dialogue, and this is going to be a good show because whenever James and I have in-depth discussions, there's much knowledge that comes out. Um, anyways, so this will be a good show. Yeah, it will, and, and, and I take it you, you enjoyed the uh, new theme uh, song, the new oh, theme. I like it. Yeah, that's, that's very good. And uh, we try to make light of it. We try to make a nice environment here. Um, very welcoming. We we really do want um, a lot of interaction with people. Um, so, anyways, um, well, well, the theme song was meant to be sarcastic because uh, it had a carnival, uh, <laughs> a, a carnival, a carnival sound. Uh, you know, uh, we're, uh, which is directed towards all of the carnival hucksters, the uh, pitchmen. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, uh, I was, but, uh, but I kind of tonight. I'm, I'm grateful. Um, I, I've done a lot of uh, a lot of good things this week, and I'll tell you what I've come down to, James. And you're part of this equation, and many other people along my, uh, I guess, CTT path. Um, the, we, we, James and I call it CTT, so people can sue us if they want. But we call it centripetal torque training or centripetal pendular torque training, whatever. Yeah. And so I guess what's happened is I turned 54 years old this coming Sunday, March 31st. Oh, I didn't and know that. I, I didn't know you had a birthday. My way of life, and I'm grateful for all of my teachers. Um, Happy birthday, sir. Um, it's a typical training uh, and weightlifting and uh, running, whatever, right? And so what's been happening is my joints and my shoulders have gotten much better. And... 
I've been practicing a lot with the Persian meal, the Indian clubs, these very light four pound sledgehammers, and I, I do these every other day, because every other day, I work out twice a day. I do centrifugal uh, torque training in the morning before breakfast. I usually do it for an hour and a half to two hours. I love it. I can't get enough. I could do this for like six hours. I just, I love swinging things, because when I swing things, I use my brain, and it evolves, like every week. Because when you improve, you get more mobility, more functionality. Your wrist, your elbows, your shoulder joints, they get healthier. If you do it right with moderate weight, you don't swing like a 35 pound base or something like that. But um, you use moderate weight, whether it's steel clubs, Indian clubs, uh, meals, whatever. Um, so I love to attend it. I'll just let, I'll let James get, I'll, let, I'll just summarize it. Okay. So I do that in the morning. And then I, I do weightlifting and stuff in the afternoon. And it, um, it just, I'm just grateful. And I read that David Coggins book, last week is four times, probably up to five times now. I love that book. Uh, Frank DeMeo, I know he's read it because on his Macefit page um, with Addicts Clubs, he, he brings out a quote, James, every day on a whiteboard from that book. And um, and so what's been happening this week, James, is I've waking up, see, I lift weights every other day, but every other day I do the cardio. So every other day I wake up and look up at 6.30 to get to the gym by 7. That's when all the yuppies leave because they all start work at 7.30 or whatever. And uh, so I have a whole place to myself at 7 o'clock. And I go for a half hour on incline treadmill, and then I do my legs for high, high reps. Like I do about 500 reps on a leg press, go on, uh, five sets of 100 reps. And then I do squats, very high repage, full, full mobility. And it, it's worked out well. I've, I've lost a lot of fat, and I feel healthy. I can see the veins coming out, my forearms, my arms. My vascularity, my yeah. It's, um, so I am, I'm very grateful that these teachers, um, and actually one of my teachers, uh, uh, reached out to me, James, that's my kettlebell teacher, that's Valerie um, Palowski from New Jersey, and she's a world champion, oh, wow. and um, very strong person. Uh, she's very light. <laughs> But she does a kettlebell that's twice what I do. Wow. Twice. And she's a little older than me. She always tells me how old she's about. I'm not going to do that. Um, probably the most positive and inspirational person I've ever met. And um, she's a big factor. She's, she's the one that's head of the Vengeance Strength Dance. Okay? She's the one that found her and Don uh, Jeff Adino, they they founded and started Mace Fit. And it's similar to Dana Ramsey stuff. It's different but similar. Um, so just very, very positive positive week. Great. I'm very grateful to you you sir. I was you know it's gonna sound wishy but I don't give a crap because I tell the truth. Well, I'm, I'm very. Ago, uh, I was in the parking lot at the gym. Okay. Call my wife, Barbara, on the cell, the cell phone. Right. And I said to my wife, Barbara, I said, Barbara, I'm really sad. I said, I wish I could go. I wish James lived closer. I really want to go for coffee with him all the time. And um, just learn a lot from you. Thank you. Anyway, that's all. I'm just well. Very, I very, very good, excellent training. I. Very very healthy. I want to. I just want. Uh, well, let me. Let me. Yeah. Let me uh, uh, get through the formalities of the show and the beginning. Oh yeah. And, truth. and the beginning segment, which is the uh, consumer advocate sucker patrol segment, uh, part is part of Chisler's Hall of Shame, and I will do that. 
But I just want to say happy belated birthday. No, no, it's coming. It's not belated yet. Oh, oh, it's this. Uh, it's next Sunday or this Sunday. This Sunday. Okay. All right. Good. That's good. And, and I want to say that uh, um, a very good friend of mine, uh, Cheryl, who is um, um, a um, she she has fallen on fallen on hard times. She she's a widow. Uh, her uh, husband uh, was killed uh, uh, while driving his taxi cab, and she has three young children. And um, I encouraged her to apply for help, um, social services. And the good news is that phase one of her help, she was approved recently for phase one of her help. So um, there, there are people that I enjoy uh, giving advice to, especially if I have a hunch. Now, usually when I have a hunch, like a, like a psychic intuition, and I have a gut feeling about something, it 99.9% .9 comes true. And uh, I've given advice before, like, like Daw from, um, the uh, the beautiful girl from um, Thailand that has uh, sings like an angel. I encourage her to uh, create a YouTube channel and put all of her music videos on there. And and then she fought, she listened to me, and I, I I gave her a nice front cover for her YouTube channel. Now it, she's got tons of music videos because I told I told her I says people have gotten discovered on YouTube. So yeah. you know when I have a gut feeling about things that are positive to help people. I, I, I enjoy doing it. I don't want yeah, any. politician though, James, the one that wouldn't listen to you about the uh, antiquated uh, infrastructure, uh, local Oh, local no, local. You, know, you know who that was? That was a, a New Jersey congressman uh, and, and a Democrat, mind you, um, Josh Gottheimer, who wanted yeah. to put his sign on my lawn to uh, promote his campaign. And I said, no, no way, because he he has these telephone town hall meetings, right? And he cut me off concerning not infrastructure, but our outdated, pathetic, embarrassing dinosaur public transportation system, you know, yeah. with, with, with the rails and Amtrak and, you know how how we desperately need what the world has high speed clean energy uh rail system and including light rails because you know buses you know they have to they have to be subject to traffic and and yeah. and they do blow off some emissions and uh you know light rails used to be called trolley cars in the old days and uh, now they're you know just high speed light rails America needs this. The, the rest of the world has it, but we don't have it. And our infrastructure is crumbling. I don't understand how a wealthy country like the United States is, is in, in the dinosaur era when it comes to infrastructure, uh, bridges and such and roads and public transportation system. I mean, China is ahead of us, Europe, Japan. I mean, God, I mean, and, and, and you know what? And, and there's subways. You can practically eat off the floor. In Singapore, if, if they catch you throwing a cigarette butt on a street, your ass is arrested. You know, you have to, you know, they enforce laws. So he cut me off. It wasn't important enough because he couldn't wait to, to talk to the females that were calling. And, uh, you know, it was, a, it was probably an ego thing. And um, I told my congressman, uh, Bill Pascrell, who's, who's in my district, I says, look, he's a Democrat. I said, the Patterson, New Jersey, the great waterfalls of Patterson, New Jersey, became America's newest national park. They have a hydroelectric plant that is unused right now that, that, go, that dates way back in the day. You know how if if this is the second largest waterfall, second to Niagara Falls in the United States, why isn't hydroelectric power being utilized right now at the Patterson Falls? Not not to not for the 
power companies to make more profit, but to provide free electricity to the people in the region. All right, and I, I left it. I left the message with the people in charge of the Green New Deal, including uh, Alexandria, the lovely uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, and she's quite lovely. Uh, uh, but anyway, I digress. Um, da, 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 now I'm going to sing the carnival. So anyway, I, 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 I posted it on Twitter to the right people, and I hope it, en it enlightens them because, you know, Jeff, whether it be political or not, there are a lot of nincompoops, imbeciles, numbskulls, uh, morons that than we think. There are a lot more of them than we think. And uh, I'll give you an example. I, I tell people that I'm going to go on the air, and where the fuck are they? They're nowhere to be found. They don't. They don't want. They don't want. Oh, they're so afraid of posting their real gut feelings and their opinions about many important subjects heaven forbid they should I post just like to learn from everybody that's what i'd like to see even just that like the kind of fun There's, yeah i mean I, heaven I, forbid I, I, I was uh, looking at as you know i was looking at steve angel's uh page right and steve angel does a lot of things that i do and what i tell him steve is um i said you know Said thanks for showing the stuff for his uh, forearms and his wrists, but he does it differently than I do, and I appreciate that. He uses uh, plates, barbell plates, and he uses a towel, whereas I use a hammer or, or a little sledge. So it's different yeah. elements, but he hits right. different angles. So I'm going to try to do what well, he did. But well, we're going to get into exactly. What you were telling me off the air that fascinated the crap out of me, and and there's two things that you in, that you enlightened me about, and we're going to get to that. But let me get the consumer advocate thing over and done with. Seven lucky bells for this week's show. Okay, Jeff Zambell's official uh, New Jersey base. Uh, main office at the Hilton Hotel on Polly Fly Road in Hasbro Heights, New Jersey. Seven lucky bells. And also, I'm going to blow it. It is time for Chisler's Hall of Shame Consumer Advocate Sucker Patrol. It's an old fashioned police whistle. I think it's from. Yeah, Okay, with my son up there, PA, just hold one second. Just okay. right, right. Hey, Barbara! Barbara! Is Christopher okay up there? Is Christopher okay in Prince Edward Island? Okay. Keep going, James. Okay, so now it's time for the world's largest and loudest jingle bell, which looks like a big gonad belonging to an alpha male. Right. Now a little uh, Ed, Ed Norton Honeymooners, the Thelma Bell. I know you like this. One. Okay. Followed by Old Fashioned Jingle Bells. Hey, we got to chase the evil spirits away before we start. You know what I mean? I mean, oh, uh, I'm already going to bring that up about this freaking men's ministry thing. Okay, we, we're going to get uh, we're going to get into that. We have a lot of <laughs> trust me. We're going to get into that now. Um, isn't it funny how certain individuals like to quit the International Brotherhood of Polyvans and then mysteriously come return with no explanation whatsoever? Isn't it funny how and then all of a sudden. They, they start posting things on our friends' profiles, if you know what I mean. But uh, anyway, I'm going to get, I'm going to hammer Walmart. You see? Yeah, that Walmart story. That's pretty yeah. interesting. Now, besides the fact, besides the fact that on three different occasions, the Walmart self-checkout gave me the wrong change, the, you know, where you check out yourself, you scan your items, three times gave me the wrong change. On top of that, on top of taking an item off the shelf, looking at the price tag, and then the cashier 
gives me a price that's much higher. All right, suspicious because they know, I think the Walton family knows that the average person is not going to say, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll stand here and wait. Go get the manager. Have them come over and, ch and do a price check. They're not going to yeah. do it with a long line of people behind them. So they're going to probably say, no, I don't have time to wait. I'll pay for it. I'll pay for it. It's mm -hmm. underhanded, dishonest tactics. Now, in this case, this one takes the cake, Jeff Sambo. I'm holding up right now a Walmart gift card that I received in the mail because I purchase things online and have it shipped to my nearest Walmart with uh, free shipping, okay? So they sent me this. Guess what? It doesn't work. It's phony. I typed in every, ser every series of numbers with the pen and I got customer service on the phone, and they kept on blowing me off, bringing up a different subject. I said, no, you're not focusing on what I'm saying. Hmm. What I'm saying is you're sending me bogus gift cards. It doesn't work. Hmm. I, I did not get my discount using the Walmart gift card. It's a scam. It's, it's nothing but poppycock, boulder dash, hogwash, whatever you want to call it, bullshit. It's crap. It doesn't work. It's similar to the gift card that had the expiration date. Okay, this doesn't have an expiration date, Jeff Sambello, but it doesn't work. It, Was it, that something that happened at Home Depot with you, too, or something? Or, or uh, a hardware store or something? No, nah, well, Home Depot just, um, let me think. They, well, they, they, they have, uh, they're, they're selling the, the same fence posts, iron hickory mall hammer that you... Oh, there's a card. Somebody gave you for Christmas. Oh, no, it wasn't Home Depot. It was it was another retail chain that, that either got bought out or went belly up. But, oh, okay. Yeah, and what happened was, in fine print, the gift card had an expiration date, and I could not use the gift card. So what happens is, you know, a lot of people, they get things they get gift cards and they they because of their life they may not go immediately to the store and use it so they might put it in a drawer and hold off now you think that you would think a gift card has the face value of the amount that's on the card mm. somebody buys you a gift card it's supposed to represent a certain amount of cash let's say they buy you a $40 gift card and they give it to you as a, a gift. Well, that card is supposed to always be worth $40. Now, when, when there's an expiration date, that's a scam because then the company just stole $40 from the person who bought the gift card. Okay, now, number two, Verizon scumbag usury. You fucks. They, I asked, uh, in, in Walmart, a Verizon uh, uh, salesperson, uh, yeah. talk about Carnival Hucksters, uh, approached me again, says, oh, what cable and internet service do you have? I says, you don't have to ask me. I already got screwed by your lying salesperson that came to the house. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, he didn't know what to say. I says, the kid lied to me about the uh, connection speed about the fiber optics cable being a, a dedicated uh, unshared line and uh, about me having a lightning speed. He says, oh, no, no, you're, you're still... When we went to uh, the house store, I went to Walmart last year, last, last June when I was there, yeah. or October, and we talked to some smart guy that was actually a salesman. You actually like the guy because... He told me the truth about something. Oh yeah, he was helpful, uh, but it wasn't cable or anything. But uh, uh, so Verizon, you know, yeah. they made up made excuses. Well, you know, technically, according to the industry, you're still getting lightning speed. I'll go, oh yeah, sure I am. I, I, it's no faster than when I had copper twisted copper cable, <laughs> and before the fiber optics. Uh, I says, I know your company is controlling the internet speed depending on how much people are paying. That's right. I know it. And he don't want to, he don't know what to say. He said, I says, well, what's, 
I says, um, Edgewater, New Jersey. Uh, is Verizon Fios uh, in that territory? He says, uh, let me look it up. He goes, uh, yeah, they're, they're there. Why? You, you, are you moving in? I says, yeah, eventually. I says, uh, but all I want is internet. How much? He says, $75. I go, what do you mean? Just, just. That's a lot of money. I says, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just to install it, the initial uh, installation. He goes, no, every single month. I go, wait a minute. I can get, I can get, I can go to Optimum and get it for 24, for $25 a month. I can get internet from Optimum. Why am yeah. I paying $75 a month? He says, well, you know, uh, if you want the triple package, it's, it's a lot less. If you, if you get the cable TV, the internet, and the home telephone. I says, but what if somebody doesn't want the home telephone and the cable TV? Uh, you know, so what you're doing is you're kind of tricking or blackmailing people into getting the triple package. And, and guess what happens after a year? The, the discount that they sign you up for expires. They jack up the rate sky high. Yeah, they jack it up. So, my wife. so what this is, is this is exactly Jeff Sambello. What retail has been doing for many years. It's very, called, very equal corporations. It's called the old bait and switch. Yep. Every they're all doing it now. Bait and switch. They sucker you in. Look at me. I got a pop up right now trying to cover the interface of my live show that doesn't have an X where I can close it out. In other words, now I'm getting, I have a, I have a highly rated pop-up blocker called Adblock on Google, Google Chrome. Guess what? Yeah. It's not doing its job. Okay. I not being able to close out an advertisement or, or a web page or a pop-up, not being able to do it means they are forcing their advertisement down your throat. Because you, you're supposed to, it's your computer or, te, or smartphone, you're supposed to have the ability to close out the page or the pop-up advertisement. But if there's no X. So I'm at the mercy of these pushy motherfuckers I can't close out the pop-up, or sometimes I can't close out the uh, web page advertisement because yeah. they have it rigged where there's no X in the upper right-hand corner. There's no X, okay? So, yes, trickery, usury, whatever you want to call it, bait and switch, and speaking of scumbags, what's that? Extortion, exactly. Now, speaking of retail scumbags, I'm holding up the wonderful jumbo cubic cubic zirconia stud earrings from mm. the Dollar Zone that it costs only one dollar per pair. And look how beautiful and clear and and fiery and and sparkly they are. All right, you still want to be suckers uh, to the fine jewelry industry, people. You still want to go to Jared? Look at that. Look at that. Look, how, that. look how beautiful these cubic zirconias are. Give me a break. Come on. I, I bought these for a reason, to prove a point. So I could show them to you how you're being screwed with real diamonds. All right? So there you go. Now, um, now on to... Jeff Zambello and I, I feel I feel your pain because I suffer from sinusitis and allergies and um, especially damp weather and all that stuff. Um, now we're gonna talk about Jeff Zambello's muscle and ministry with a message updates. Jeff Zambello, talk tell the story about your local parish that is Treating you like you were a ping pong ball. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, so all the time, uh, they, uh, these guys get you know, they, they, they these meetings, like monthly meetings. Right. right? They're going to do this month, and so they can write reports to the head office in Toronto. So during these meetings, they say, "Oh, let's um, 
I said, men's fitness classes, you know, taught by Jeff. And really, like, I'm a busy person. I really like to cheer myself, but you know what? I can help somebody, that's fine. But, so everybody's excited at these meetings. It's like David Goggins of that book, um, Can't Hurt Me, says, he says, when people are sitting at home on the, on the couch or the recliner watching television about the Himalaya Mountains and climbing Mount Everest, it's very easy because you're you're in a comfortable zone. But when you when you're actually on Mount Everest and you can't breathe because there's no oxygen and you're freezing, it's a whole different story. So, anyways, when push comes to shove, <laughs> um, when it becomes real, I get these calls on Fridays late in the afternoon. And, oh, um, the church building, the basement is rented. I, that's where I train the guys, is in the, in the nice basement. It's a finished basement, you know, little basketball court there and stuff like that. They play uh, floor hockey, the kids. But anyway, that's, that's where we do the sports activities, and I do my training there. Um, so, um, yeah, they get these calls. On Fridays, then oh yeah, well this this reason that reason we can't do it. Okay, well, like last week I purchased these medicine balls with the um, the handles and to do things similar to what I was taught at Dana Ramsey's class. That's a new fitness with the mace because I think these things you know like the, the sagittal plane, the frontal plane, the transverse plane, it'll be a lot safer for the guys. Okay. And swing in the mace. Because they're really novices. They're, they're, they're not even weak and worried. These are nice guys, but they're whatever. Okay? Just, yeah. Ham and eggers, uh, uh, greenhorns, whatever you want to call them. Uh, so, ne ne I'm not neophyte. Sure I'm just saying they're yeah, not really. Yeah. There's no hunger or ne thirst. Like, we're hungry to train. And like people like Ken Thiessen, they're hungry. They don't have the passion for athleticism yeah. and physical yeah. fitness. Like William Calvani. Yeah. yeah. He's got passion to get his belt there. Yeah. He's got black belt and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Well, it's okay It's okay to be a neophyte, you know, because okay. everybody has to uh, crawl before they can walk. Everybody has to start somewhere. But, right. But well, these, today, like, I'm, I'm a little sick. Yeah. You know, physically sick today, and I, I still worked out. Because I, I love to, I have to work out. It's, it's in me since I was a teenager. Well, anyway. it makes you feel better when you're so, sick. Yeah. So then, um, so that's why so that's and then you can't teach next week, which was supposed to be tomorrow, because um, they're gonna be playing all night and everybody's gonna be tired in the morning. So I said, that's fine, that's fine. So what I did was I like to work out every other day with my weights, doesn't matter what day of the week, it's every other day. I work out twice a day, and then I do my cardio on the other days. So and when I do my cardio, it's it's really for my brain, because when my mind says, "Oh, it's you're pushing yourself too hard," um, listen to that you gotta override that mind, and that's the beautiful thing about kettlebell sport, is that there's this little quiet voice in your brain that says, "Oh, you can quit. You can put the kettlebell down," or, or if you're, for your running or on a long distance bicycle ride. Oh, you can just stop pedaling and take a break and look at the birds and smell the flowers on the side of the road. Right. No, no, no. Once you push past that little message, then something else takes over. It's a beautiful thing. And then you can go faster, farther, and stronger. Anyways, so that's... <laughs> I know I'm going off a lot of changes. I apologize for everybody. That's okay. Sorry. These are principles and practices I live by. So anyways, one, so what I said at the beginning of the show I was grateful is that I'm discovering. Now, I, this, first of all, this title of the show is very misleading in the fact that there's a ministry of muscle, whatever the, I do. And I'm just a guy who loves to do it. And the great thing, James, happened this week is I don't like organized religion. I don't. And when I exercise or I go walking, 
it feeds my mind, my soul, my spirit. And and these are things I'm discovering through through centrifugal talk training. Well well organized religion just like the ancients from three thousand years ago. Right, that's correct. Yeah, the organized religion often contains people that are uh, sanctimonious, self-righteous, judgmental, whatever you want to call it's them. kind of to make reports. So then, like, tomorrow I get a meeting at 6 o'clock, whatever. They ask me, they said, they call me today. I'm like, oh, you can teach tomorrow. Like, what? Uh, I, I said, no. I said, you told me that I can't, that I can't teach for a couple of weeks. So I was like, so I did when I trained every other day, and today being the every other day is it's Friday, and I already did all my weightlifts and stuff and my, and my CTT this morning and everything else. I'm not going to overtrain, and oh, but you can do it after the men's meeting at six o'clock, uh, which will probably be like seven o'clock or eight o'clock on a Saturday night. And and I, you know what, James? It, 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 this is not just this place. It's it could be a school, a university, um, a social club, whatever, right? The Masons, the Knights nice Club, whatever. All these leaders in all these organized places, all these organizations, they have to write reports and tell their bosses how great they are and what they accomplish this month. So if I teach tomorrow night and put the feather in their cap, even though the, the men don't really want to be there because it's Saturday night, they want to be with the kids and the family. Um, so that's, there's always an ulterior motive, and I kind of don't want that. It, it wrecks my spirit with my, now, I've been doing this since I was a kid, and as James knows, I'm going to share something with you, as everybody knows, so I say this every week, I ran my first Boston Marathon, 26 miles when I was 15 years old, in 1980. And I started training for it when I was 14 years old, obviously. But when I trained for the Boston Marathon, I wanted to do it in less than four hours at 15 years old, which is like eight, eight and a half, eight and a half minutes a mile, whatever it is, right? So in order to do that, um, I ran at least nine, yes, nine miles every single day. And then on the weekends, I ran more. I ran 12, 14, 17 miles, 21 miles on Saturday. So, Sundays. And I had 100 mile weeks a lot of times, 70 miles, and then 100 mile weeks as the marathon was approaching. Right. <clears throat> Plus, when you live in New England, it snows, it rains, you have heat waves in the summer. You don't stop training because it's snowing outside. You you were in the snow. <laughs> and that's how badly I wanted. So nobody had to tell me to do that. Right. You know what I'm saying, James? When I went to airport school, I, I ran my third marathon in, in 1986. And that's when I went to airport school for the U.S. Army. And I wanted to, you had to qualify for it. They don't just give you the money. The government has to pay for you to go to Fort Payne, Georgia. It's all the taxpayers' money. So you have to beat out the other cadets to get a slot. So you have to do so many pull-ups, so many push-ups, and you have to run the two miles in less than, I don't know, 11 and a half minutes or something like that. So, less than 12 minutes, I'm sorry. So anyways, I just did it because I wanted to go to airball school. Okay. To tell somebody that they have to train, you know, I get these, I train a couple of these powerlifter guys, and you know, the trainer, they have a tough background, and um, and they're exceptionally strong, but they're dedicated, and they love to train. They're always at the gym when they're supposed to be. I never have to pull the teeth out of their mouth to get them to train. Well, they they show up. They want to be winners. They can taste it. They can smell it. They have a passion for it. You know, yeah, they can already visualize themselves on the platform. Yeah, but exactly. Please, 
It could be anything. It could be tennis. It could be golf. Anything. You got a passion for it. You can you apply can yourself. We do it start their own uh, bakery business, or the uh, yeah. or a kid that wants to go to school and become a lawyer, but he knows he needs to get certain grades. He, or chef. He already visualizes it. Or culinary culinary school to be a chef. <laughs> and you have a passion for you. You're able to focus when you have a passion for something. Focus. Like, you live in it. Like Mr. Miyagi said on Karate Kid, focus, Daniel San, focus. Yeah, you. That, that's literally what you do. You put blinders on, like the Clydesdales. Uh, you know, you got blinders, and you zoom right in on. You do what you have to do. You know? Yeah, but you do it because you want to do it. Because you have to do it. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, I mean, because you love it, you enjoy it, you have a passion yeah. for it, right? It's like when you teach. It's not work when you when you teach. Oh, do you work? Actually, go for a, a half hour more than they were supposed to go for because they didn't have the time to do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what you're saying. Well, you're just verbalizing. Problem. Yeah, you're verbalizing what's in your mind already, and you, and it's not it's not a job. It's it's enjoyable, but uh, uh, you know, it's been, been very discouraging. James knows this. He knows about all the cancellations and this and that. And yeah. It, and I never see this in any other aspect of my life. Like I deal with a lot of professionals. I deal with lawyers all the time, and government officials, and uh, CPAs. Engineers, professional engineers, and they're all hungry and thirsty to do the best job they can do. And you don't have to pull teeth out of people's mouth. Right. And now in this case, with organized religion with the, with the local the local parish, they let they let you know the last minute for everything. Everything's a last minute announcement or a last minute. You know, almost like you have no life that you're supposed to jump a mile high every time they contact you. You know? Yeah, but I don't. Yeah. I don't I, 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 this has happened. A very sad thing has happened. Is that it's actually, it's a good thing, actually, in the long run. It, it sounds sad, but it's actually a good thing. It's actually hardened me. It has actually uh, taken away me being a follower in a. Um, a subject <laughs> to be submissive. No, yes. God created every single person here to be themselves. Okay, we don't all need to be generals. We don't need only to be servants. If that just means being a servant to yourself, that's great. Because if you yeah. treat yourself well, you're going to help out society. Yeah. Well, my sister found out the hard way about about non-denominational Christian churches. She experienced it. I experienced it. Uh, uh, you know, you, you you there are more people with hang-ups and issues within the church than outside of the church in secular secular society. Oh, it's it's kind of it, it, if you ever watch a Skeptic Lives movie, they'll have this little. Glaze over their eyes. It sounds mm -hmm. like the step for wives. It sounds like oh. the, it sounds like these these dudes uh, in the fitness it's industry. Delusional. They're a state of delusion. It, it sounds like these uh, gentlemen, and I'll use that term loosely, in the uh, circular training world, who who have turned it into an industry. Their eyes are glazed over with delusion too. You know, you got you got people doing seminars for almost a thousand dollars a person and they're not teaching uh, much at all uh and they're using terminology from that uh, that was coined invented by other people they're borrowing terminology from other people like jake shannon let's say carl gotch and they're reusing it and uh you know it's you know but you know what P.T. Barnum said it best about there's a sucker born every minute and uh, uh, there are people who are, you can, you can call them hero worshippers, groupies, but uh, they need someone to tell them what to do, but 
if you're going to choose a person to guide your life, at least choose someone who's being honest and sincere with you. Well, I, I will say something, and I like to hate brother stuff. I do love most of my uh, circular training teachers. Like I love the Frank DeMeo. Right. He's on the he's on the brother page. I love Valerie Pelosi. I love Don Jeffrey. You I learned stuff from Rick, and um. But I value everything I've learned. Um, and I think there is value. I think, well, there, I know there's value because I would have never known this stuff. But I guess having learned this now for, for a few years, I've, it being middle aged, we wisdom is that if you do things for your body uh, with the proper weights, um, the proper movement, know your limitations, know that how to go past those limitations in a safe way, I think you can have a better quality of life. So I am grateful. Uh, you know, especially with guys like Kashi, uh, William Kavani. William Kavani has inspired me because he, he, he does maces every day. Uh, Ken Thiessen, he amazes me because the guy weighs like 240, 250 pounds. He's got so much muscle on him. He climbs up like these poles. And, and roll. Wow. Oh, and I don't know how the heck he does it. He's so functionally fit. Yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, Come on. I, uh, Steve Angel, same thing. I, I've learned so much from him. Uh, he's overseas in England, or the UK. Right. And just watch those videos. But he goes very slow. He tells you how to. To look at, look in the a mirror, or look in the, the practice outside, but look at your your window on your deck, the sliding glass windows as your mirror. Um, take your time, use more ways. Remember that James with Steve Angel post. He says, he says, don't go past twenty reps. He says, don't use weight that's too heavy. No, well, that's what the the polybonds. That's what the Pol the Persian, the Iranian polybonds in, in Los Angeles told Richard Army McGuire. Don't uh, swing heavy. Don't swing heavy. The great people in this industry. Don't swing heavy. Uh, Daniel Ramsey uh, taught you a lot when you took his uh, course, his class. And for years, just as, as, as Daniel Ramsey said, when Daniel Ramsey taught us, he says, the more you do this, <clears throat> the breed, um, Fitness style, new breed mace style. He says you're going to discover things. It's going to evolve, and it, it really has. Uh, when you practice something, you it just amazingly implements that you you pick up the the, the different types of lunges, uh, the different types of planks and planches, and and then uh, all these other things. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, all the contortion. Well, I'm holding up right now. I'm, ho I'm holding. I'm holding up. And you get your feet in front of you. And you lift up your trunk, and then you lift up one leg. And you just you can spend hours doing this stuff, and it just makes you a better athlete. So this is the beauty of the Polybon page. And I guess James, what I really would like to see, really, is more people on this. I just say. Hey guys, um, have you guys ever done um, a hip bridge or this and that? Or have you ever tried this using a mace? Or you know, yeah. like James was saying the other day, and I like what you said. You really like the, you find the, the grave digger beneficial. Now, one thing you know, you, uh, me, and, and Rick Brown, we all agree on is that. We like the 360, we like the, the 10 by 2. And, but we see a lot of people with a razzmatazz into these, you know, the, the mace flow. Uh, but we like things like the grave digger. And, um, well, to supplement or accessorize the classic um, mace lifting. Um, uh, but, now, the grave digger, what? The, a modified grave digger, 
would be yeah. when you take the mace. Now I'm I'm holding up a wooden spoon that is kind of messed up and beat up and old. So, I, but I use it for my critters over here. Uh, it, it looks like it's the shape of a mace. All right. Yeah. Now, if you're doing the grave digger, would be a back exercise where your hands are like this. Okay, and then. You're make, you make like you're digging the grave by going real low. And if you, a lot of people just come up to shoulder height. Now, if you, if you do the grave digger, uh, which hits the entire back, uh, shoulders, uh, certain parts of your arms, and if you take it all the way up, then it becomes like a torch press. So now you're, you're, you're doing a, um, a, you know, a push, push, pull muscle combination. Okay, because you're taking the the mace all the way upward. You go, you're going into a torch press, uh, and then you're coming down low, and then you you go, you try to dig as low as you can. So so it's sort of like you're combining push and pull muscles simultaneously. Now that would be an excellent exercise but the the main thing is you can't use proper safe perfect exercise form if you're lifting too heavy if the mace is too heavy and there's a lot of big shots on youtube that all they care about is how much does it weigh how much are you can you swing how much can you curl how much can you bench press and all, all they care sad though yeah we all agree on that and it's like we hate that saying when the, you know the famous saying is how much yeah james fish is that how much how much can you lift how much can you bench how much yeah that is the worst thing you could ask somebody because you just ask them somebody to ruin their shoulders forever well a certain someone <laughs> a, a certain someone a certain thinly mustachioed someone asked Ken Thiessen, how tall are you? What, why is that relevant to um, a person's athleticism in any way, shape or form? I mean, how tall are you? That's like saying, well, how much you bench? How much you curl? How, how big of a mace can you swing? Well, you know what, Ken Thiessen can say, go on YouTube, look at my video where I put the mace on a scale and I zoom in on, on, on the numbers of the scale and then I proceed to swing a 75 pound homemade gata, my, uh, mind you, homemade gata that he verifies it weighs 75 pounds and he swings it for repetitions, Jeff Sambello, for repetitions, not, not it, just it like... Is, is amazing. I'm telling you, and, and oh, by the way, that video I posted, take a look at that, what that girl does. She climbs the rope like it was nothing. And she, when you see this woman, this this young lady, yeah. what she does in that video that's on the Polyvon group, you will be amazed at the upper body strength that a woman can, can have. I, I, I was totally, uh, shocked uh, 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 the, the, this professional wrestler uh, friend of mine called the Meringue Warrior he gave me the link uh, to that he's a he, he trains in kung fu also he likes wow. he likes old kung fu movies and all that so uh, the Meringue Warrior he wears a mask he's a Dominican guy so he he sent me the link and I'm like oh my god look at this girl look, how do I mean, you you watch it and then you let me know what you think on the group. This woman's unbelievable. The upper body strength. I just want to say hi to a couple people that are watching. Uh, uh, Vern Uvizian of, uh, of of South Florida, originally from New York and Long Island, and Donald Boos. Uh, they both have joined. Uh, Yes, they both have joined the show. Uh, um, um, yeah, Ver Vern's husband is in the fine cigar business. He, hmm. he, uh, yes, he. Let's just put it that way: the fine cigar business. 
and uh, she now resides in. But not the cigars you'd buy at a gasoline station. <laughs> No, no, uh, and hopefully, hopefully, El Producto, El Producto cigars. El, El Producto. Remember the the Nobilis, the little Italian stogies. They called the Nob the Nobilis. You, you, <laughs> you know, be. Uh, um, I think Clint Eastwood used to have them sticking out of his mouth when he did the oh, sp yeah. spaghetti westerns. Yeah. Smoke. Well, he, oh, he, chicken, oh, oh, he would love to hang children up in a smokehouse and smoke them. Yeah, he well, said. That was the oh, he couldn't stand kids. They were no, they were annoying as hell to him. He somebody asked him. Oh. Somebody asked him, "Do you like children?" He says, "Of course, I like children. I like them deep frying." You know, he said. I like Krampus. Maybe he's there at the ice cream station with the kids around supervised. You know what? There, there were so many signs at the buffet. There's only one sign that wasn't there. I says, what? children should not be up near the food unaccompanied by an adult. Right. Period. They let their kids, I'm glad you brought it up. They let their kids run around like their home. It's not their home. It's, it's a person's place of business. And the inventory is very expensive. Right. An owner spends a lot of money on fish, yeah. on duck. And if, if those kids do the wrong thing for the food, the customers are not going to like that. And the kids, the kids leave the door to the ice cream station open, so the ice cream gets soft. But these these fatty ob buckle, they look like Chris Christie. These fatty ob buckle kids, they look like they're going to dive in inside the ice cream hot ice cream station at the Royal Hibachi. And, and where are their parents? Their parents, see, I'm glad you brought it up because I want to attack this modern day parenting that's going on. And, and it often happens with uh, single mothers that do not, like, let's put it this way. Even, even the yuppie fathers don't discipline their kids. They, no. they, they treat them like equals. They, they try to negotiate with their children the parents are no longer alphas. They're not alpha parents anymore. I says to somebody, if I would have done that when I was a kid, I get the back of the, I get the knuckle sandwich right, right across the chops, you know. Yeah. And you can't do that because it is fucking diapers, you know, uh, agents. You can't discipline yeah. your kids. I would say to the government, I would say, oh, could you raise my kids better? Well, you know what? Let them come by your house. Take them. You know, I mean, uh, um, I'm telling you, they're little monsters. This this kid looked like, I don't know if he was in junior high school or, or whatever. He's trying to ride his skateboard inside a shop right in low right. He's bringing his skateboard inside the supermarket. And people are looking at him like, you got to be kidding me. You know, yeah. of course, the management is not going to tolerate it. He put a skateboard? Yes. Yeah. The restaurant? No, inside inside of the supermarket, he's trying to he's trying to zip, he's trying to zip zip up, you know, uh, zip around inside the, the supermarket. What about the old people? That's a liability. Yeah, <laughs> if I ever saw somebody doing that near my grandparents, I'd be furious. That's a liability, Jeff. So, well, if somebody, all someone has to do is like, you know, if they're looking straight ahead, they they could easily walk, step on his skateboard and go flying. Or they could smash their teeth on the floor, and then that kid's not going to pay for uh, the dentist. No, but they'll take it out of his parents' hide, and and this is what happens when you have modern day parenting that where, where the kids do not hear the word no. Well, they they have to hear the the word no, like no or else. There has to be an or else connected to the no. But yeah. to, today there is no no. Or, uh, or else you have young single mothers letting their daughter their young daughters go to school dressed like prostitutes literally literally mm. and I, I i got flack on my progressive discussions facebook a page from a uh, single mothers that said oh you're a misogynist oh you're this you're that i know i'm not i'm realistic i'm just being yeah. realistic with them you if if your daughter is dressed dressed like a whore and she's 
young, she's only asking, not asking, but she, 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 she can only expect trouble from people that are not very nice. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, let's, let's put it that way. It's like it's like the the what do, what do they call it? The all gender restroom at a college university. They, they tried this stupid idea a co -ed. of a of a co-ed restroom in a college university. Oh yeah, I could see all the perverts going there. Are you kidding me? I mean, what is the purpose of that? It's like, what's next? You go to the health club and and uh, uh, you have a co-ed locker room and the men have their schlong uh, waving back and forth and their balls are flopping in the breeze and then you got women walking around or, you know, or, or the, uh, the female sportscaster walking into an NFL locker room. And, and, and my, I had an argument with an old friend of mine, he says, Oh, if, if they know that there, there's a, a woman uh, from the media coming in, they're supposed to cover up. I said, why? That's, that's their territory. That's alpha male territory. Mm -hmm. Why should they have to cover up if, they're, if they just got done taking a shower? Mm -hmm. You know, is that some kind of like politically correct thing? Is that some kind of feminist crap? You know? Yeah, it's a weird world. They just, I kind of, the great thing on it is I kind of ignore all that crap because I won't give it. I won't give them the pleasure or the um, the satisfaction, I'll say, of making me something I'm not. I just it's like this church thing. Like, <laughs> it's like yeah. I go there just to learn a few things. Like, I'm not going there like yeah, to be my boss. Like. What? Yeah. yeah. What? So they can get glory points, so they can get their own church someday and be ministers. No, then it becomes about it yeah. becomes about ego. Go get a real job. Go if, get a real job, like yeah. become an engineer or something. Well, instead of the work, instead of the work, uh, fix cars, yeah. like uh, do auto body mechanics or uh, do something that's weird, like please. Yeah. Instead of uh, spreading the word of God, they're, they're worried about their ego. They're worried about being in the spotlight. The the pastor or the evangelist or the whatever the minister. Yeah, but oh, for them to gain approval from their boss, it's just it's not it's not the real purpose, James. That's the thing. Like, why are you there? Like, like no. Okay, when I help people or I train people. I don't charge the money. I do it because I give a lot of satisfaction. I like to teach. I, uh, when I teach, I learn more about myself. I think I get more out of, out of it than, right. than my pocketbook, we'll say. And it's made me a better athlete. Anyways, life is a nice journey. Yeah, and, um, and, and, and you were talking, we were talking offline about just how versatile uh, and exercise equipment, the four pound sledgehammers are. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they're, they're very inexpensive. They have a yeah. long, they have a long, uh, wooden handle, which is, uh, which means greater torque. Uh, you yeah. can, you can do Indian club movements. You can do Persian meal, per, which is a club, Persian meal or, or Indian jewelry movements. Uh, because of the torque, uh, difference compared to regular clubs, uh, because I'm I'm assuming that the four pounds is all yeah, the, it's the right length, so it doesn't hit the floor. Like when I'm doing, like um, you know, obviously I'm doing when I'm standing up, but they're not so long. But when I do, uh, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, when, when clean, you, like side cleans. Yeah, uh, they're not hitting the floor of my living room. They're a few inches off, and it's beautiful. And then I'm letting the weight do all the work. And what's happening is, after so many reps, you know, both hands and everything, my forearms are on fire, and I love it. Yeah. I'm just getting all this fresh blood in my joints, my ligaments, my tendons, 
There's nothing like it. Now, don't don't underestimate I people. Put them in the back seat of my car. I can do them anywhere in the world. I mean, people, people don't underestimate the weight of the four pound sledgehammer because of torque. Well, most of most of the weight, maybe maybe over ninety percent or ninety five percent of the weight is going to be on the far end. So the four pounds, once you start swinging the four pound sledgehammers, it's no longer four pounds anymore. It's probably many times over that. Yeah, it's just but it's safe. It's a safe weight, and then we'll progress to six pounds the sledgehammers. And then we'll for rest to eight pounds, a pair of eight pound flesh hammers. It's just, it's a beautiful thing because it's longer than a steel club and it's shorter than a steel mace. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, so you could do. <laughs> you, Excuse me. That's okay. No, God bless. So you could do the, you could do the traditional yeah. Persian meal swing with a pair. Yeah. Of four pound or five or what is it six pound the next so what I'm doing with them it's very similar James to the 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 East Indian dumbbell swings okay so I'm using uh, four pound sledgehammers to do that and um, if you know what I'm talking about well, and that's how with my kettlebells too like I'll do I'll use like a, a fifteen pound then a twenty pound the 25 pound dumbbell at the gym and do these in, these Indian um, uh, dumbbell swings and it just makes all the tendons in my forearms my, and all the ligaments that connect my elbows to my forearms to my biceps to my shoulders and it <coughs> and I do those in between sets of my kettlebell uh, snatches it's just so rehabilitated and what, what, what James would prevent is overuse injuries okay. from doing the same motions. You're doing all different planes. And you could do the internal and external heart heart shape. You know, the heart. The kettlebell swing is a sagittal lift. And then the dump, the, um, the, um, the Indian dumbbell swings are frontal planes. The house line. I can know you got back. Okay. Keep I'll, I'll do a little Jew's heart. There you go. The house line right here. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> all right now the um yes they're extremely versatile and uh they won't hit the floor so you can do any any indian club or persian uh or uh, a club persian meal exercise can be done with these steel sledgehammers I would probably, uh, let me see. I know they go up to, what's what's that? Well, they do they do go up to 10 pounds, right? Or is it 15 pounds? With that? With the sledge, the, the sledges, they go uh, with, with, I think they do. You want to order it? I guess you can have 20 pound sledges. Well, I mean, I mean, a Home Depot does have um, ten pound, like you said. Up, I think. Well, a ten pound sledge is with that kind of torque. That'll be way too heavy to do to do a, a wide array of swinging. Yeah, probably five six. Uh, the five six pounders would be, uh, I guess, the a good limit. If somebody wanted to do like all various uh, swing, you know, uh, internal, external, heart-shaped swings, um, uh, for leverage, leverage exercising, um, uh, you know, for the forearms, 
that that's another plus with hammers with uh both uh, the sledgehammer and dead blows and yeah. the, is the leverage exercises that you can do um I mean, just uh, you remember the old the old time blacksmiths. Uh, they had tremendous forearm strength and size. Yep. You know the blacksmiths, and uh, so you're you're mimicking uh, old time uh, uh, labor laborers. Uh, you know, man. Thousands of years. Yeah, thousands of years. You had you had people. Making swords uh, for uh, for warriors uh, uh, that was. I saw a quote. This kind of pertains to the Palavan. They said, "This this is one of the reading pages that I'm involved It said, "A reader lives a thousand lives during a single lifetime." Do you get that? Uh, yeah, because because many knows so much, and here's the beautiful thing about Palavan training of all different aspects. It's, you can explore every single training day, which for me is every other day. It's, it, anyway, that's all I'll say. I, I could go on and on about it, but everybody that's listening to the show knows exactly what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean. Uh, uh, way of Wise, wise people throughout the ages have writ, writ, have written books, and I know what you mean. You know, you read books on different subjects, and you do live uh, many lives because they are, their advice and their wisdom is contained in the books. You know, I'm not talking about fiction and romance novels. I'm I am no, I'm talking exactly about fiction, and I know a lot of people don't like literature. I love literature, and oh, if I, can, I want to watch a biography, yeah. I'd rather watch a documentary on TV or a biopic. Right. And then, because, uh, yeah, okay, here's what I'm very disappointed in with history books. A lot of these history books are written by, um, um, people pursuing PhDs. And so they go on these, they go off on these big, big tangents forever and ever with these minutia statistics or these foolish factoids that's like in the fine print of a legal document. Like nobody cares. All, all, all of these history books can be summarized to maybe 150 pages at the most. You're right. Maybe 100 pages. But they're like six or 700 pages or 1,000 pages because they're filled with a bunch of crap. Well, you, well they're not accurate. We're, what about American history not saying a word about the genocide of the of indigenous peoples and and about the the slave days, about the, the, the cruelty of slavery? And, I mean, they don't go... They don't go into what what they did to the Indians. I mean, Native Americans, making them leave their original homelands that they were probably there for thousands of years, making them march to a reservation in Oklahoma, and 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 die along the way. That I didn't see that in my history books when I was in school. You know, I mean, be honest, uh, at least with the history books. Mm. Tell the whole truth. Don't tell the whole truth. Don't make George, General uh, Custer look like some American hero because he wasn't. I mean, Sitting Bull was a much bigger hero than than Custer because I they, love that story about Sitting Bull. I love that the, the Battle of Little Bighorn because the Sioux, yeah. the, the Lakota Sioux, were fighting for their homeland. Yeah, you know, and uh, but there's a there's a lot of listen. There's a lot of accurate history that i never seen in my history books, but you know where I see it? On cable TV, uh, like on the History Channel and documentaries. Mm -hmm. I see it on documentaries. That's where I, I find out the real history about everything. Because yeah. your books, the taxpayers uh, are paying for public school textbooks, but they're, they're not only outdated, 
they're inaccurate. You know, well, they're slanted. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're a bias slant or whatever. But um, um, anyway, then we close to ten o'clock here. Yeah, and, and uh, so kind of want uh, if you if you will indulge me and kind of wrap it up, I you know, I'll do as much. Yes. I appreciate that. Uh, it's about, uh, that's true. It's almost, it's almost 9 p.m. here. Okay. I'm going to wrap it up with, uh, one or two questions for the copper divining rods. Cool. Copper divining rods. Uh, is, is a certain, uh, mustachioed, uh, legend in his own mind. Did he, um, give Mr. Ken Thiessen those wonderful, uh, 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 compliments be because Ken Thiessen posted images, photos when he was on Saturday Night Live a, a, a couple times, more than once. Yes. So in other words, is this a form of elitism, of uh, uh, focusing on people that are somebody important, so to speak, the people that have done uh, important things uh, uh, in the, in the spotlight. Is this a form of elitism? Yes, yes. Okay. So because he he instantly commented on uh, uh, when Ken Thiessen posted photos of when he did Saturday Night Live more than once. So so if if Ken Thiessen was the super athlete that he is, but he only let's say. He never worked for world the worldwide uh, wrestling entertainment. He never worked. He never. He, if he never was a professional wrestler that was on TV, if he never did Saturday Night Live, if he was just Ken Thiessen, a personal trainer, and that's it, would the mustachioed person uh, instantly pay so much attention to him with compliments? A big no. Oh, so my hunch, so my gut intuition, copper dividing rods was correct, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, that's it. That's it. We, we, we had to get the dividing rods in there somehow. So I will blow the bosun's whistle. And uh, as always, Mr. Jeff Zambello, thank you for joining uh, me with the, to do this fine show, which will be on. I learned so much. If you just practice it, your inner being, your inner being, James, can be one of your greatest teachers. Oh yeah. The, hey, Bill, remember that huge book uh, written by. A uh, legendary bodybuilder, Bill Pearl, I think was called the Master of the Inner Universe, something like that. Oh. Something like that. There's a, it's a huge book. Every, Jeff, every exercise that was ever invented since the beginning of, of, of uh, recorded exercise history is mm. in that book. It's a huge book ah. by Bill Pearl. I have to find, I'm going to find the book and post it on the Polyvon page. Yeah, that'd be so, if you can actually post the IFBM, and that way, Sorry. all we have to do is um, um, uh, cut and paste it to the to Amazon, and and uh, it'll bring up that book. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. All I'm I need gonna, is the IFBM. I'm gonna. The, I'm, I'm, the nine digit or the thirteen digit. ISBN, and then I can I can. Well, uh, what what if I just find the link to the uh, to the book itself on on, on uh, Amazon? Oh, that'd be cool. And just post it, and then people can go take a look at it and see you know how much it is. It's a it, it, it's a famous legendary exercise book. It, it, I mean, the, when I first saw it, it was the early 1980s that I was that I first laid my eyes on. The book that was purchased by an old friend of mine who was deceased, God rest his soul. But yeah, he he had the book, and it was huge. It was a huge book, and 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 every exercise that was ever invented is in there. 
along with, you know, Bill Pearl was a legend, you know, like uh, John Grimmick and all oh, that. Oh, yeah. Guy. Oh, yeah. So anyway, uh, we'll, of course, we will talk all, off the air, but Bosun's Whistle. Uh, what a good show. Okay, thank you, everyone. Bye bye. God bless. God bless, Harry. This has been a Mega Life 21 production.